Welcome to the Adirondack Mountains. Point that howitzer the other way, will you? It might go off, and buckshot makes a very stubborn stain. Who are ye? My name's Barnett, Mike Barnett. Who are ye? What do you want? I want you to come to parade rest. I'm up here to do a little hunting. I was on my way to Deer Falls. My car ran out of gas, and I thought I might be able to stay the night here. We got no room. But the sign says... You just heard what I said, mister. You got a gallon of gas? The sign don't say nothing about gas. Now, get along. Now, look, Buster, you posted the road with a sign that says tourists. If you don't want the state police up here to find out why you greet your guests with a 12-gauge salute... What is it, Kurt? Fowler says he wants the room. I'm out of gas, ma'am. Well, let him have a cabin. Come on! I said let him have it. Thanks, ma'am. The sea gets out of here first thing in the morning. Okay, mister. You heard. I'll put that away. That's $10 in advance. $10? No wonder you need a gun. Room needs doing. Ain't had trade in two or three weeks. If you want anything, ask Kurt. How far is it the nearest town? Town of Big Rock, about 20 miles. I haven't got enough gas to take me 20 feet. Kurt will siphon some gas off the tractor. Well, it's mighty obliging of you. Charge you for it, though. I wouldn't go prowling outside much if I was you. We had some chicken thieves lately. Night, mister. Go along, Kurt. so long, Ethel, I just couldn't... What the devil? Where's Ethel? Who's Ethel? Uh, who are you, for that matter? Is Mrs. Turner here? I hope not. I rented a cabin, not a dormitory. Well, answer my question. Where's my wife? Where'd you leave her? Right here. You sure you haven't got the wrong cabin, mister? My name is Turner. My wife and I have been living in this cabin for the last three days. She was here this afternoon when I went into town to fix our car. Now, what is this? Who are you? I'm a guy who's had a long day, mister. I took an overnight lease on this hut from Laughing Boy and the old lady. They said there hasn't been anybody in this cabin for weeks, and if it's like this very much around here, I can understand why. We'll just see who's supposed to be here. Get the person I rented this from. This fella bothering you, Mr. Barnett? I was looking for you. What's going on around here? Where's my wife? You know what? This gentleman seems to think I've either got his wife or his cabin or both. Mrs. Turner was here when I left. I come back here to find her gone, and you rented our cabin to this man. You know this fellow? No, I don't. Oh, but you know me. Mister, I ain't never seen you before in my life. You better get. Oh, listen, my name is Leon Turner. My wife and I have been living here for three days now. Don't you remember? Look at me. You either got the wrong place you up to something. Now, you get. I'll show you that I've been staying here. My suitcase is up. Well, oh, my clothes are... Where are my things? What have you done with my things? I left all of my things here. My wife did, too. Well, you're thieves. I'll give you just six to get out of here. One, 
two. This is like a nightmare. Three. Well, okay, I'll go. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, I warn you, I'm coming back with the police. Crazy people. The world's just full of crazy people. What did you come back for this time, mine? I came back for my wife. What have you done with her? I'm sure your wife's a very charming woman and all the boys are trying to steal her, but and this is no reflection on your wife. I came up here to relax. I believe you're in this with them. I'm a private investigator. If you really are, why don't you help me? I can pay you. You say you and your wife have spent the last three days in this cabin? Yes, we did. We're on our way to Canada on a fishing trip. Just stopped off here because I heard there was a nice, nice stream down the valley. The old lady said nobody been in this cabin for the past two weeks. Well, she's lying. I think she is, too. But before, you thought that I was lying. I found this newspaper with yesterday's dateline on it. Well, of course, I put it there. And I also found some freshly spilled face powder in here. And a long black hair. Ethel's brunette. When did you last see your wife? Well, just this afternoon. I took the car into town. When I came back, well, you saw what happened. Gone, vanished. They've got her. These people have got her. Have you got a picture of her? Oh, well, of course, in my luggage, wherever that is. Haven't I seen you before? I don't know. You might have. We're in, in show business, Ethel and me, hoofers. May have seen us someplace, caught our act. Yeah, maybe. Is there a phone up at the farmhouse? <laughs> yes, but there's also that, that grinning idiot with that scatter gun. I'm not going to go All right, all right, all right. Where's your car? It's up on the main road. All right, you go into town and get the law. I mean, you're going to help me? I'm going to try to get to the farmhouse to the phone. You better get to town anyway. You're not safe around here. Now beat it before Kurt comes down here and shotguns you full of blue whistlers. <laughs> Dear Falls to tell him why I'm late. Put it back. Sure. You should have asked. Should have asked first. And a very good night to you. calls from here? No, there was a fella trying to use the phone without permission. A York City fella. Night. Where are you going? Why, uh, I was just going to my car to get some sleeping pills. I have terrible insomnia. You looking for me? I'm just going to the barn to feed the chickens. At this hour? What do you city fellas know about poultry? 
Uh, wait a minute. You better let me get some sleeping pills for the chickens. That coffee might keep them awake. Well, good night. to get in this. We're in it now. Supposing he brings the police. He ain't gonna do that. You know he ain't. I just caught him now trying to use the phone. Run him out of the house. He went out to his car to get something. Well, he was using the phone without asking oh, first. Stop gabbing. Let's get back to the house. He's gone for the police. He'll be back as fast as he can. He, he doesn't think I tried to run away from him, does he? I wasn't trying to run away. You've got to tell him that. These people, they, they, they said they'd kill me. They're keeping me here. You've got to get me out of here. I'm going to help you, Mrs. Turner. That, that, that man, Kurt... Why are they keeping you here? I don't know. I, I think they're trying to get some money out of Leon. They, they took all my jewelry. It, it wasn't much. We are wealthy people. Kurt's out there looking for me with a blunderbuss. My car's out of gas and I don't know my way around these parts. You wait here. Don't let anybody know you've seen me. Leon should be back with the police pretty soon. I'll go back and play stupid, okay? Do it? I, I think so. Good girl. Here, in case you need it.
Princess Adirondack 550 Ring 3. It's a tourist lodge on the Big Rock Road. Send the state police right out. A man's been murdered. My name's Mike Barnett. No, I didn't do it. Just hurry. Stay where you are, Mr. Barnett. Kurt's dead. I know. I just phoned the police. He's dead. I'm sorry, Ma. Sorry? You're sorry you stuck a sickle in his back? You think I killed him? He was laying in your cabin. Ain't nobody else could have done it. Now, wait a minute. Kurt said he didn't trust you, and I wouldn't listen to him. Well, this is his gun, and I'm going to use it on you the way he should have done. You got it all if wrong, If you know Ma. how to pray, start now and get down on your... Give me that, Ma. Come on. Thanks, Leon. Your wife's out in the barn. You keep an eye on Ma. I'll bring her in. Well, you're getting up. I want to talk to this woman and find out what's been going on around here. Take it easy. She's not in much condition to make sense. Her boy just been killed. Did you get the police? No, I didn't get that far. My car broke down. I better phone them right now. No, I just phoned them. They'll be here soon. You keep an eye on Ma and see that she doesn't get into any trouble. <laughs> Now, is it safe? It is now. The old lady's up at the house. That horrid Kurt, where is he? I'm afraid he's dead. Did you? No, no. You better bring Leon's things along, too. He's waiting for you. Leon? I thought you said he went for the police. He did, but he had car trouble. No, I phoned for them. Is this all the luggage you had? Yes. They, uh, they locked everything in here with me. I, I, so, so no one would find it and get suspicious, I guess. Suspicious? Of an evening dress? That's mine. What's so odd about it? Nothing in New York. A little out of place in the Canadian woods, you'll have to admit. Oh, well, we, we planned on stopping off in Montreal for Wearing a couple of days. Wearing a modest collection of jewelry which you brought along on your fishing trip? Yes. In fact, the only things you neglected to bring along were some outdoor clothes and some fishing gear. We, we left that stuff in the car. Not all of it. What do you mean? Is this your tackle box? That's quite an assortment of lures. Now, what kind of a fish would bite on these? Suckers. <laughs> I'm going to leave this place gun shy. Don't be so optimistic. Put that stuff back. Drop in the suitcase. Sure. Anything to oblige. Shut up and turn around. Put your hands up. That diamond sunburst looks familiar. It could be the Wilkerson robbery in Boston last week. You read the papers, don't you? You're carrying around about $60,000 worth. That could bring about $20,000 if you know a good fence, and I'm sure you do. I'll do all right. I could return it to the insurance company and get a nice fee. You're not returning anything, Mr. Barnett. Your last fee is going to be paid off right now. By the way, thanks for the gun. Don't mention it. If you're a real nice girl, I'll even return the cartridges to you. I said I was going to act stupid, not be stupid. I don't believe in harming an hysterical woman. Listen, Barnett, I'll make a deal with you. I can still fence that stuff. No deal. I'll let you take all of it. Just keep Leon away from me. What do you got against Leon? He's been looking all over the place for you. He'll kill me. Your partners, aren't you? He planned the whole thing. I was holding the stuff for and him. You decided to do a vanishing act. You're right, Leon won't like it. Barnett, he'll kill me. What about Ma and the laughing boy? How do they figure? Oh, they're just a couple of yokels. I told them Leon was no good, that he beat me, and they offered to hide me till I could get away. Okay, baby. Save the rest of it for the cops. Come on, let's get out of here. Give me that gun, Barnett. Let's toss it over here. Hello, dear. Leon. I was worried about you. Leon, listen, listen. Uh, they, they made me do it, the old woman and the man, Kurt. They shut me up and tried to get me to tell them where the stuff was, but I wouldn't tell them. You know I wouldn't try to double-cross you. You know that, oh, Leon. Sure. <laughs> sure. I know you wouldn't try to double-cross me. Ma and I just had a long talk over at the house. She told me how you fed her some line about me taking dope and beating you up. She told me how you paid them off to make like you never lived here. Now, you wouldn't double-cross me. 
Not much, you wouldn't. Leon, what are you going to do? Give me the stuff. Barnett has it. Toss it here, Barnett. Sure. Anything to stop a family quarrel? Thanks, Barnett. Don't mention it, except to the police. The nearest cop is more than 45 minutes away from here. Plenty of time. Plenty of time is what you and Blossom here are going to get, Leon. Also, they've got some Chippendale with wiring by Con Edison up at the death house, and I believe you're entitled to a seat for sticking that sickle at the Kurt Mason. Well, he interrupted me while I was going over to the cabin for the stuff. You murderer! Take it easy, Alma. I didn't mean to kill him. He asked for it. With his back to you? And flap into your gums long enough, Barnett. I'll get over to the corner with Ma. Fast! Come with me, baby. With you, Leon? Yeah. We're gonna take a little ride in Mr. Barnett's car. You never been to Canada, have you? No. Well, it's too bad, because you're never gonna see it now. I'm letting you off just before we get there. We can't get out. What about this bulldozer? Does it work? Yeah, Kurt rented it out to the highway people last week for some road grades. Let's give it a try. Yet, lady. Are you Barnett? Yeah. We got a call. It seems to be in the trouble. A few casualties with a sickle and a gun and a bulldozer. We need a little first aid and a coffin. 